Hi, I'm Gordon from Camera Labs, and in this video, we'll find out whether the DJI Pocket 2 is the best camera to date for vlogging, or indeed for anybody who needs to film a handheld video. It could be for a family or work project, or perhaps you're adding some handheld B-roll to a bigger project involving multiple cameras. Now, I'm filming this intro with the original Pocket 1. In fact, back then it was called the Osmo Pocket, and this camera already ticked a lot of the boxes that people look for. It provided great stabilization by mounting its camera on a tiny gimbal. But the bit which made this camera really clever was that DJI packed the electronics of the unit itself into the handle, which you hold for filming. So there's no need to actually add any accessories in order to hold this camera comfortably and start filming. However, the new Pocket 2 addresses some of the concerns that we had with the original model. A slightly bigger sensor coupled with a slightly brighter lens should deliver improved performance and quality in low light. And that lens also has wider coverage too, which is always beneficial for this sort of thing. Hopefully the autofocus has improved and DJI has also developed a new wireless microphone accessory, which I hope will be a lot more convenient, at least a lot neater than the way I currently do it. I have a USB-C to three and a half millimeter adapter plugged into the bottom of my pocket one here with a Rode Wireless Go literally dangling off the bottom. It is not neat at all. So hopefully we can do a lot better than that. Now, in order to really do the Pocket 2 justice, I've teamed up with my friend Ben Harvey, who not only is an owner of the original Pocket 1 and now also the Pocket 2, but he's also tested a bunch of gimbals and vlogging cameras and accessories. So he is the best placed person I know to really do this kind of review justice. So without further ado, over to you, Ben. Gordon has let me loose on his channel once again, and today we're going to be talking about gear, in particular, vlogging cameras. Now, DJI have just released the second version of their mini camera gimbal combo. Now, if you're not familiar with what a gimbal is, it's a mechanical stabilizer so that when you're walking and running and moving around, your footage stays really smooth. DJI have crammed this into this, kind of. Let's see how they compare. All right, to make it a fair test so that it's not completely obvious which one is which, I have stopped the Sony full frame camera down to F8. Uh, so the blurry backgrounds are not necessarily going to tell you which one is which. But if I turn around, got a bit of direct sunlight, is it obvious the difference? Let me open up the aperture on the full frame camera and then that should give it away. Sorry if the waves are making a bit too much noise, but I wanted to give you something pretty to look at. So I've come down to the beach at sunrise and here we go. So you've got massive full frame setup on my left, your right, and on the right hand side I've got this tiny little gimbal shooting in the same resolution. There you go, side by side. I'm gonna have to put this down now. Now at first glance you might think it's a bit of an odd form factor, but think about it, DJI make drones. So all the while their camera's been mounted on the underside of their drone like this. Somebody in the office at DJI must have said, hey guys why don't we just turn it upside down and put it on a selfie stick and we could sell that. And then the DJI Osmo was born and now it's evolved into the Osmo Pocket. Before we look at the specs of the Pocket 2, what is on the wish list for the perfect vlogging camera? First of all, maybe obvious, image quality is important. You also want to be able to record your audio using an external microphone. You will need stabilization, especially if you're walking or moving. A wide angle lens is great to show more of your context. A front facing screen, reliable autofocus, and ideally the option to attach filters to the front of your lens. Now that wish list is based upon vlogging, therefore filming yourself. If you've got your camera locked on a tripod or if you're indoors, then most of that list won't apply. But are there any cameras that do all of this? Let's take a look. Now at the expensive end of the spectrum, you're probably looking at a full frame camera like this. It's going to be accompanied by a fast, expensive lens, like a 16 to 35 f2.8, a pro level shotgun microphone on the top. It's going to have a flip out screen on the latest models and it's usually accompanied by a Gorillapod or a mini tripod for a few reasons. First of all, you can hold it out and it gets more of the view in shot. Secondly, it gets more of a stable shot because you're holding the camera essentially on a mini tripod. And most importantly, a Gorillapod or a switch pod like this, you can flip it out and it becomes a tripod because these very quickly become heavy and they start to hurt your arm. Now the downsides to this, obviously it's expensive, it's heavy, but when you start to walk and talk, you can get away with it for a short period of time in your video, but I'm walking on a pebble beach now, it's a bit, it's a bit all over the place. I'm just gonna hold this with two hands because it's already getting heavy. 
when you walk and talk with a camera like this, it starts to get a bit wobbly. Even though the latest full frame cameras do have built in stabilization on the lens and also on the sensor, it's still not ideal for walking and talking. So the right tool for the job. The size kind of becomes irrelevant because you don't put this camera away, you put it down. Because there's a microphone attached to it and it's usually connected to a Gorillapod or a mini tripod, you don't try and put it away in a camera bag. So the size of this is not so relevant. And one more thing on convenience, what I would highly recommend is that you get a peak design plate to go on the bottom of your camera. This works on tripods, anything that is Arca Swiss compatible and you can get one of these from Peak Design. These quite simply allow you to clip your camera onto your strap or on your belt or anything and then you can carry on with your day. And because it's compatible, you can go from here, you can put it straight on the tripod which is what that camera's on right now and if something is happening, just quickly release it, film, film myself and then you can just put it straight back on your clip. So regardless of how heavy it is, it still can be convenient. Ah, my arm is really grateful that I'm finished doing the full frame camera because god damn that is heavy. Wow, what a difference going down to the next level of camera. Looking at something slightly smaller, you've got APS-C and Micro Four Thirds. Now these are smaller, lighter cameras. They're typically made of plastic. Uh, the lenses are smaller and lighter and cheaper also, but with that comes the sacrifice because their apertures are normally a bit smaller. This lens is a f4.5 to f5.6, so in low light it's not so good and don't expect crazy blurred backgrounds either because that is not possible with these. Twinned with this you might get a smaller Rode Video Micro with a windshield, which is what I've got on right now, and twin that with a switch pod or a gorilla pod and you've got a great vlogging setup. Each of the different camera brands have got their strengths and weaknesses. Some of them are really good at autofocus, some of them are better at stabilisation, but still this genre of camera is not great for walking and talking and therefore you need to look at other systems. The next camera system down the line is the Premium Compact, the most relevant being the Sony ZV-1 at the moment. I don't have one, uh, but interestingly that camera was targeted at vloggers. Now it ticks all of the wish lists except for one thing, a wide angle lens. So close Sony. And although, yes, the camera does fit inside your pocket, as soon as you add an external microphone and use the vlogging handle, it doesn't fit in your pocket anymore. And therefore it's pretty similar category to the APS-C. So if the camera's gonna fit in your pocket, it needs to fit in your pocket with all of the accessories ready to shoot. Hopefully Sony address the wide angle lens on the next version. Out of all the cameras we've looked at so far, none of them tick all of the boxes on the wish list. But could something that fits into your pocket really do everything? In this category, you've got the DJI Pocket, previously known as the Osmo Pocket, action cameras such as the GoPro Hero 9, and of course, let's not forget the camera we take everywhere, our mobile phones. Let's start with the mobile phone because these are getting better and better every year. This is a few years old, but the latest iteration of the iPhone, it's got a wide angle lens, the stabilization is getting better and better. However, you've still got some problems with the mobile phone. First of all, it's an awkward shape to film yourself with. This isn't, doesn't have a handle. Ergonomically, a mobile phone is not very helpful for filming. Secondly, if you want to use the best cameras, which are on the back of the phone, you don't have a front-facing screen. So if you want to use the best wide-angle lenses, you can't see yourself. Secondly, audio. The microphones on these small devices are getting better and better with every single iteration, but if you're out in windy conditions, you need external audio. You can get external microphones for mobile phones. I reviewed the Rode Video Mic Me L for Gordon's channel again, and it's a great microphone, but once you plug it into the phone and add the windshield, that is bigger than the phone itself. It doesn't fit into your pocket anymore. It defeats the whole purpose of having such a small camera in the first place. So for those reasons, I'm gonna to have to dismiss the mobile phone for the perfect vlogging camera. Then along come the GoPro Hero 9 and the DJI Pocket 2. They have great image quality, great stabilization, wide angle lenses, front facing screens, external audio, and the ability to put filters on the front. They tick all of the boxes with some caveats. Now, even though I'm putting both of these cameras in the same category, they are very different. You can tell from the form factor, they have a different purpose. The GoPro is an action camera. You can chuck it in your pocket, you can mount it on your bike, you can put it on a chest mount, you can go underwater with it. This can take some abuse. The Pocket 2, on the other hand, this is a fragile camera built into a gimbal. These are not designed for the same purpose, but for vlogging, they can perform the same task. Starting with the Pocket 2, let's see what improvements they've made over the original. I have both of the DJI Pockets in the same hand, and the first difference you're going to see, the biggest difference, is the field of view. The original Pocket on this side has a full frame equivalent of 26 millimeters, 
and at times my head goes out the top of the frame and it's not quite wide enough. They've addressed that in the Pocket 2. It's now got a 20 millimeter full frame equivalent. And so that is one of the biggest benefits of the Pocket 2. But there is a hack. If you own a Pocket 1 or you want to grab yourself a bargain, you can use a wide angle adapter. The one that I've got is made by a company called Freewell. I haven't tried the others, but I'm very happy with the optical quality of the Freewell. Let me show you what that looks like. Here is the side by side. I've got the Pocket 2 on this side and I've got the original Pocket here with the Freewell wide angle adapter. And as you can see, I'm starting to get similar field of view. So the downside of using the wide angle adapter is that you can't use NDs anymore. But over here in the Pocket 2, I've got a wide angle lens and an ND filter. If you're not too fussed about using the correct shutter speed and you want the widest angle possible, then the Pocket 2 has got another trick up its sleeve. It comes with a wide angle adapter and this takes you to a full frame equivalent of 15 millimeters. So it really does start to get quite wide. Look, that is pretty wide. You're getting a lot of the view in, but once again, with this, you can't use ND filters anymore. Other improvements to the Pocket 2 include a dedicated power switch on the side, faster startup times, more microphones, but the fun really starts when you add the do-it-all handle. This unlocks the ability to connect it to your phone via Wi-Fi, previously only possible with a physical connection on the Pocket 1. And although the physical connection of the original Osmo Pocket is strong enough to hold it, you're not supposed to do this by the way, it's not very reassuring and you'll probably end up using some sort of phone mount and then that defeats the point of having something so small it fits in your pocket anyway. So I typically use the phone to dial in the settings and then I detach it and then I'd rely upon the front facing screen for composition and exposure. By connecting the do it all handle, it's unlocking a few features for me. First of all, I've got it connected directly to my phone via Wi-Fi, So I can see on my screen exactly what the camera sees. So I've selected myself and it should be tracking me wherever I go. Previously, if my phone was physically connected to that, I wouldn't be able to see the screen and I wouldn't be able to see exactly what it's tracking. Secondly, the audio is coming from a wireless microphone, which is across here, and it comes with the Filmmaker's Kit and it's directly connected to the Pocket 2. I've got a lav mic plugged directly into that, but alternatively, you could use the wireless mic, clip it up here, and it comes with a magnetic windshield as well. So as you can see, So it's a great feature, but as demonstrated here, it's not very reliable right now. It's trying its best. It's not like it's in low light conditions or anything, but uh, the, tracking, the tracking is not like it is on their advert. So there you go. Great feature, but I think it needs an update. So the Pocket 2 comes with a tripod thread in the bottom, which is really handy. That's how I was able to mount it to the top of my tripod earlier. And it comes with this miniature tripod, which is quite handy. This is how I usually leave it on the side. However, I think they need to work on this because once you folded it up, that's the shape of it and that doesn't fit in your pocket. So if they could redesign a tripod that actually folds down into a pocket shape, I think that that would be better. All of these improvements on the Pocket 2 are very much welcome, but there's no denying that it is challenging the size of one's pockets. Now, you could say take off the do it all handle. However, this is the key to external audio. So I need this on the device at all times. Now, the problem that that creates, it doesn't actually fit into the carry case anymore. So I'm not entirely sure how I'm supposed to transport this around safely. Companies like Polar Pro make accessories and I had a gimbal lock for my first version but because this gimbal is slightly larger, the same lock doesn't fit on the Pocket 2. So hopefully somebody's going to start making accessories to protect the gimbal head whilst you're traveling. I've owned the original Pocket for over a year now and I've made quite a few YouTube videos with it. Now, it's a great camera, but its shortfalls were the not so wide angle lens and the afterthought of external audio. They sell a dongle that you clip into the bottom of it. It's very difficult to get hold of and it has been the reason for so many ruined videos for me. Essentially, when you plug in the external audio adapter, it takes about five or six seconds to register it. So you'll plug it in and you'll think you're good to go. You press record and the first five seconds of your video is just you talking. There is no audio. Then the audio kicks in and I cannot tell you how many videos are ruined because of that. So I'm really happy that they've addressed both of those issues on the second version. Let's compare the Pocket 2 to the GoPro Hero 9. Right, here we are. We've got the GoPro Hero 9 on this side 
and we've got the pocket two on this side. Uh, I've got the sun behind me, so I'm going to wrap it around. And the external audio is being recorded on the wireless microphone on the pocket two, simply because I do not own the media mod for the GoPro Hero 9, and that's the only way you can get external audio onto that. Now, both of these are in the same settings, kind of. They're both in 4K, both at 25 frames per second, uh, but I do not own any NDs for GoPro Hero 9, uh, whereas the Pocket 2 here is shooting at the correct shutter speed and I'm using ND filters. I've got both of them set to standard color or normal color, so GoPros tend to be quite punchy and the Pocket here is shooting in the standard DJI color profile. This is where GoPro really shines, blue skies. This is what GoPro is all about, blue sky days. I think the difference between these two cameras is that people use the Pocket Original and the Pocket 2 as a proper video camera. So what I mean by that is they use ND filters, they use external audio, they are looking to create good looking video footage. Secondly, it's because the menus on the Pocket is manageable. You can go, you can click in the Pro settings and you can change the shutter speed and the ISO very quickly. On the GoPro, however, you need to go into the profile, you need to then scroll down, you need to pick a minimum and a maximum ISO, you then need to click on your shutter speed, and the whole process is so slow that you definitely do not have what I would describe as a manual workflow if you're trying to film proper stuff with the GoPro. It's worth noting as well, the GoPro doesn't have focusing. Quite simply, everything is in focus. Because the sensor on the Pocket 2 is slightly larger, the GoPro has a one over 2.3 inch sensor whereas the Pocket 2 has a 1 over 1.7 inch sensor. It might sound like no difference at all but when you compare the two side by side it's quite a big difference in the Pocket 2. The Pocket 2 also has a fixed aperture of f1.8 so in theory the Pocket 2 should be much better in low light but I need to test it out so I'll hand you over to me in the woods before sunrise. It's just before sunrise, it's overcast, it's winter, and I've come down to the woods where Gordon usually does his vlogging tests, and I'm going to be testing out the low light capabilities of these three cameras. Let's start off comparing the original Osmo Pocket and the new Pocket 2. Right, here we are. So we've got the original Osmo Pocket, which is this side, and we've got the Pocket 2, which is on this side. The immediate difference you'll see, first of all, is the width of the lens, but right now we're looking at the low light performance. Okay, so both of these cameras are on exactly the same settings right now. We've got 4K, 25 frames per second, 1 50th of a second, ISO 3200. Both of these cameras are set to the standard color profile and exactly the same settings in every respect. Let's go somewhere a bit darker and see how it handles it because this is actually correctly exposed. So right now you've seen the benefit of the Pocket 2, which is this side, versus the original, which is on this side. Uh, the original has a fixed aperture of f2, whereas the new one has a fixed aperture of f1.8. And there's also a boost in ISO up to 6400 on the two, and it maxes out at 3200 on the original. And also, there is a slight increase in sensor size on the Pocket 2. Right, now that that's done, let's compare the GoPro Hero 9 and the Pocket 2. Right, another side-by-side -side test. We've got the Pocket 2 against the GoPro Hero 9. Just looking at the screens here, I can see a significant difference. But both of these, once again, are in exactly the same settings. We're talking 4K, 25 frames per second, 1 50th of a second, that's your shutter speed, and the maximum ISOs that both of these devices go up to, ISO 6400. I've got the stabilization on and boost on the GoPro, so this is the best stabilization you can get. And obviously the Pocket 2 is a gimbal, so the stabilization is irrelevant of the light levels. So how is it looking? Now up until this point, everything in this video has been the normal color profile. I wouldn't normally do that if I wasn't comparing it to other cameras. I would be using the log profile, which DJI call the D-Cine-like. And the reason being is it just gives you a lot more flexibility when you come to edit the video afterwards. So if I could just click my fingers now, I've applied a LUT over the top of the video. It just boosts the contrast and saturation and you can just change it to your taste. Side by side, the original Pocket seems to have a lot more saturation to it. Uh, the Pocket 2 looks a bit flat in comparison, but that might be because it's got more noise reduction being applied. It might just be because of the different sensor, or it might have more dynamic range, and therefore, straight out of camera, it looks like a flatter image. 
some people might want to use this camera for shooting b-roll so let's see how closely it can focus and if it's any good for shooting b-roll I compared the minimum focusing distance of the original Pocket and the second version and they're both around 10 centimeters, so no real improvement on the new model. Now I've watched some footage back that I recorded on the beach and I'm not particularly happy with the audio but I think I know what's gone wrong. So at the moment I'm using the wireless microphone that comes with the Creator Combo Kit and I set the audio levels on the Pocket 2 appropriate for this but then I plugged a lav mic in and that has got completely different volume to it so I think that's ruined some of the audio a little bit so I apologize about that but I think that this is a good opportunity to do a quick audio test using the different microphone options on the pocket too right so what I've done now is I've switched off the wireless microphone and this is using the built-in four microphones that are now on the pocket too so you've got one on each side of the pocket therefore if you're filming yourself or if you're filming somebody else the audio should be picked up and hopefully, not particularly windy right now, but uh, hopefully four microphones would help to absorb some of the sound of wind. Next audio test, I'm still using the wireless microphone, but this time I've plugged a lav mic directly into it. You can see it on my collar here. I think that this is the best option. It still fits in your pocket, but you get a little bit higher quality audio than the built-in wireless microphone. Right, and the final test, this is a lav mic plugged directly into the side of the pocket, which is going into the do-it-all handle. So therefore, no wireless transmission of the audio whatsoever. This is directly plugged in. How does that compare? Now on my earlier test when I was on the beach, I was about 10 meters away from the camera. I turned my body away from the camera there from my body was between the pocket two and the microphone and the audio completely cut out. So I think you have to be careful with the range and the direction that you're using this wireless microphone. But if you're vlogging less than a meter away from the camera, this is not going to be a problem. That concludes the audio test. So over to me on the South Downs to wrap up this video. So is the DJI Pocket 2 the perfect vlogging camera? Well, it certainly ticks all of the boxes. If you've never used or owned a gimbal, then once you look at the footage, be prepared to get excited because it really is quite special. By far the best method of stabilization. If you've got an existing Osmo Pocket, the original, is it worth upgrading? Well, I think all of these improvements, yes, there is benefit in upgrading. If you want to keep the original pocket, but you're disappointed in the field of view, then consider getting the wide angle adapter. You just need to be a bit careful with the audio because that will cause you problems. Those that haven't used the original Pocket or the Pocket 2 might dismiss it because it seems too good to be true. How can a stabilized, high quality camera fit inside your pocket? Well, it does. Welcome to the future. This is happening. Okay, that just leaves me to say thank you for watching. Hopefully this was interesting and informative. If you like the video, make sure you like it, subscribe, and consider buying Gordon a coffee. Maybe he'll buy me a coffee back. Thank you for watching, and hopefully I'll see you in a future video. Whoa! I'm okay. Before we look at the specs of the Osmo Pocket, it's not Osmo Pocket, it's just Pocket 2. They dropped the Osmo. No! And you've got a flip out screen. Time to move.